I mean, it's just yeah. not, you have to just be really careful with the evidence that's thrown out at you in your high school, college classes, or, or just by people that you know, right? I mean, and you don't argue, you don't have to argue. Um, you don't have to argue your point and, and uh, all of that, but it's good to become informed as to why you believe what you believe. I mean, assuming that you believe God created the world in six days, um, it's important to come to understand why you believe that and, and honestly how some science really helps support that, but not prove it, right? It doesn't prove it. Mr. Olson. I read in a book once, it was talking about just this topic, and it was the Christian versus the university professor. And uh, the Christian said the earth was created in six days, and the uh, um, professor said, no, it wasn't. And the Christian said, prove it. And he, I mean, it's just exactly what you said, right? And it turned into a stalemate, so it, it's just. Yep. No, no where you stand there. Right? right. Just know why you believe what you believe because you have faith in Jesus and um, and witness to that faith and when you get ridiculed for it, that's okay. Right? Paul was beaten and whipped and shipwrecked and stoned and um, all of that. So if you get ridiculed because you believe that God created the world in six days, um, A, a not a lot's happening to you and B, you're in good company. Right, because Paul got ridiculed for the faith also. All right, Jewel, last question. So how, what is it? What is there? Well, how, how old is it? You mean like, no, no. Like, how old is it that you believe? What? How old do you think the earth is? How old do I think the earth is? I think, I think science, uh, there's a lot of scientific evidence. There's a lot of what are called geological clocks that seem to measure the um, certain processes that seem to be pretty uh, pretty even from year to year to year to year, right? So like they can measure the accumulation of dust on the moon every year because it's pretty it's pretty cosmic dust. It, it lands on the moon in pretty pretty uh, pretty even amounts, right? Each year. Um, it's, I understand that the moon lander had great big feet on it because they actually thought that the moon lander would sink into the surface of the moon because uh, how old the moon supposedly is, there should be a lot more dust accumulated on it than there is. And so they put gigantic snowshoes on the moon lander so that it wouldn't sink in, All right? I mean, so there's these geological clocks. And the, and the geological clocks that we have put the Earth somewhere between like 10, which I think is kind of young, 10 and 50,000 years which I think is kind of old. My guess, my guess is that it's somewhere between 10 and 20,000 years old. And that everything that's happened has happened in that amount of time. All right, All right let's finish the uh, Genesis 1. You guys got me totally off track. Um, I think it's an important topic, though. Creation is an important topic for Christians to really wrap their minds around and uh, understand that... Um, Understand that it's just what you hear in science class is not proven fact. Not proven fact. Nothing you hear about evolution in science class is proven fact. It's all a theory. All right. Theory. All right, where are we at? 25. Who's up? All right, Maxim. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds and the living and the livestock according to their kinds. And everything that, that creeps on the ground according it, to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and all over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Hey, uh, Eric. Could you just shut his uh, the door that's closest to us? My guess is that that's open. If that one's... If that one's shut, we're good. Leave the other one open. It gets too hot in these rooms if both are shut. All right, and verse... What are we on? 27. 27, who's up? So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created 
and God bless them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heaven, and over every living thing that moves on earth. All right. So, Joel, you see that? The command, the first command that God gives to Adam and Eve is to be fruitful and multiply. Aren't you the one that asked if they, uh, how long were they in the garden? Yeah. Right? I don't think they were very long in the garden because I think as people of God, they would have done what God told them to do and had children. Right? So, so I don't think that they could have been there very long because... They seemingly needed to fall into sin. Adam and Eve needed to fall into sin before they had a child. Right? So I don't think that they were there very long. I don't know. You know, we just don't know. I, I honestly think that on day eight, the tempter came to them and tempted them to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I mean, I think, I think it happened really fast, personally. But we don't really get a sense from the Bible besides they hadn't had a kid yet. And that was a command of God. So for them to have lived in the garden for three years, they would have probably been violating the commands of God at that point, right? And by not having kids. So that's why I would say it was probably pretty quick. But, but we don't really know. All right. So what did God create on each of these days? So if you look at your uh, book... All right, so God's creative action. I've got two, uh, two sides to the chart here because I think God's creative action is different on the different days. I think God is doing some different things. So the first side, the left side, God's creative action consisted of defining his creation. So remember, we kind of said, here's all the stuff. In, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and here's everything that exists this great big mass of stuff. And now God, God goes about defining it, structuring it, ordering it. All right? And so on the first day, what did God create? Light. light. All right? God created light. And, and actually, I, don't, I didn't write this on here, but, uh, but he separated then the light from the darkness. Right? He separated it from the darkness. <coughs> Now what's interesting, I think it's interesting, God created light before he created what? The sun and the moon and the stars. God created light before he created the light things in the sky. All right? And this is where somebody, somebody said this connection before then, right? Who is the light of the world? Jesus. Jesus. And when you get to when you get to Revelation and it talks about the new creation, it says the new creation won't need the sun and the moon and the stars because Jesus is the light. So kind of interesting. I mean, I don't know. I don't know the uh, the whole what's the new creation going to be like. Just kind of I, I don't know. I can't wrap my mind around it completely. But but that's the connection. I think Harrison, you made that connection before, didn't you? Yes. Right. That that there is a real connection there when God says, "Let there be light," and there's light, and there's no sun and moon and stars. Right. There's something pretty amazing happening there. Right. God. God can create light, and this is, I think it's a direct relation. Jesus talks about himself being the light of the world, and in Revelation it talks about not needing the sun anymore because Jesus is the light. All right, what did he create on day two? Day two, do you remember? Um, the heavens. The heavens, that's exactly right. So uh, the sky to separate the waters. I'd say I'd just say sky so that, you don't, that it doesn't confuse you or anything like that, right? Um, the sky to separate the waters. And again, we don't completely understand what's happening here. A lot of commentators say, well, there's, there's moisture in the atmosphere, there's clouds and things like that, and then there's water on the ground, you know, in the oceans and lakes and streams, and, and that could be the separation. Um, we don't really... We don't really completely know. Some uh, Christian scientists think that the Earth was kind of covered with a with a vapor canopy that kind of kept a global temperature. They've actually found like fossilized ferns in Antarctica, for instance. 
I know it's kind of interesting, um, but but a but a global kind of a global temperature, um, and there's some uh, there's some interesting evidence of that I think, um, but uh, but then the Bible the Bible talks about uh, then right at Noah's flood what happened? It had never rained before. It had never rained until Noah's flood, and so the waters above let loose and flooded the earth. And then water came up from below the earth also, right? So the waters above and the waters below actually meet. I mean, that's, that's kind of the picture that I think is uh, pretty accurate. And, uh, and it's probably in the, uh, the waters that come from below it is probably part of what broke up what we would call Pangea, more than likely. It's, it's in the event of the flood that all kinds of things actually happen. Walter? In Genesis chapter 2, verse 5 and 6, it says, um, When the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the land yet, and there was no man to look around, and a mist was going up from the land. There you go. Watering the whole face of the ground. Yuppers. I mean, that's, right? No rain, and just kind of a nice atmosphere of mist, humidity that waters the ground in a natural kind of a way. Yeah, so so uh, the earth pre-flood was probably incredibly different than the earth we have today. Harrison. Oh, okay. So what do you got created on day 3A? The, uh, the dry ground, right? Dry ground and then he, he separated the land and the water created dry ground, separated the water, or actually he gathered the waters into one place, right? That's what it says. And that's why, that's why if he gathered the waters in one place, then the earth is probably gathered in one place. All right, so no problem with uh, one kind of land mass. I've got a thing for day one. All right, um, day one? Yeah. All right. What if instead of talking about, like, the sun at the light, yeah, no, no, exactly. That's what I was saying. Harrison kind of made that connection earlier. I think that's very much that's very much a uh, a connection because then when we get to Revelation, there's no need for the sun because Jesus is the light, right? And uh, yeah, I think that's I think that's exactly right. But what does that look like and and all of that? I don't know. But but that's what really is the connection and what's going on. Absolutely. So then God's creative action changes from kind of defining creation. And, and organizing creation to doing what? Filling creation. And now what does he fill creation with? On day 3B he says, let there be? Plants. plants. Vegetation. And on day 4 he says, let there be? Harrison? The, 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 sun, moon, the sun, moon, and stars. Right? He's filling creation. And this is probably where, right, so on day four, I think it's day four where he creates everything else in the universe, right? The, the, uh, so the uh, old, 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 right, way right back in the Middle Ages, right, what was the center of the universe? The earth. The earth, right? We know that the earth isn't the center of the universe. But in a very, <clears throat> in a very real way, God, when God creates in those six days, the center of the universe is earth. And Christians could still understand that the center of the universe, the center of creation, is really the earth. Because this is where God creates people. This is where God chooses to create people. And so I think it's on day four then, he creates the sun and the moon and the stars, and, and then with that, every other solar system, every other galaxy across the universe. He creates all of this. So there's a lot that happens at the voice of God uh, on the fourth day because I think every galaxy and all the billions and billions and quadrillions of stars are created. If there's any other planets, they were all created on this day. The solar systems of all of the uh, different uh, uh, galaxies were created on day four. Joel? When did the flood happen? Like... In the Old Testament. What? <laughs> but like, is there like, does it like sit? We don't have a date. So it could have been like. I don't know, like, 10,000 yeah. years ago? 12,000 years ago? Okay. Probably. Yeah. 
probably in there, maybe 15,000 years ago. Probably not more, uh, uh, no, definitely not that far. Probably the flood actually, the flood actually probably is a lot sooner than that. It's probably uh, five or 6,000, let's see, two, four, six, eight, maybe 8,000 years ago, right? Um, it, there'd be probably a couple thousand years between that and like Abraham would be a reasonable guess, right? The repopulation of the earth, a couple thousand years would, would repopulate a lot of that Mediterranean world. Harrison, day five. All right, water animals and birds, and day six, land animals and man. Walter, question? Um, so there were 700,000 years before, pre like the actual fall. Say that again? So there were a couple thousand years between the fall and the flood. At least, probably. Might have been. I mean, if, if the earth is 20,000 years old, there could have been... Eight, nine, ten thousand years between creation and um, no, no, no. Wait, wait, stop. I totally, I totally take that back. There could be a long time um, uh, uh, if if the genealogies are gapped. It could be a long time. So some of the scientific evidence that we that we have says you know ten to twenty thousand years old. Um, if it's that old, then the genealogies in Genesis are gapped. That means they don't list everybody. I, I tend to believe that the genealogies aren't gapped, and so I would tend to believe that the earth is 10 to 12,000 years old, with a little bit more time between the flood and Abraham, not between creation and the flood. So I think creation and the flood is actually relatively short, and, and this is how we get this. If the genealogies all track, right? If the genealogies aren't gapped, right? That means they're not missing names. And it's literally Adam who's the father of Seth and Seth who's the father of whoever, right? As we go through. Um, if you play out those genealogies and how long everybody lived, a a Adam, Adam would have still been alive when Noah's grandfather was living. So Noah's grand Noah's Noah's father, I think it's Noah's father. Noah's father could have known Adam. Alright? So I think that there's actually a shorter time between creation and the flood, and a little bit longer time between the flood and Adam. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, somebody in Bible class, when, back when we did Genesis in Bible class, summer Bible class, uh, somebody uh, worked out all the numbers for me and gave me a genealogy with everybody's, uh, everybody's dates. It's really awesome. Yeah, and it's uh, Adam, uh, Adam, Adam could have known, I, I think it's uh, Adam could have known Noah's dad, Lamech. Definitely Methuselah, which is Lamech's father. But uh, Adam, Adam, I think, might have known Lamech, but died before Noah was born. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's remarkable, I mean, to think about those kinds of things. Ellie? Well, I answered my question. I was curious. So. Joel? Okay, so, so, so now how, I had a question. Wait, so, when did, like, all of that? So like when was like what, when did the ice age happen? I thought I thought like when all those history. Yeah, the ice age the ice age is is in uh, in reasonable history. I mean, a couple thousand years ago was the ice age. Um, there were still there were arguably still woolly mammoths in North America in the 1600s. There are stories about North American Indians hunting woolly mammoths in the 1600s. Like when the mountain men started going west of the Mississippi and exploring west of the Mississippi, there are actually stories from Native American tribes that they were hunting, still hunting woolly mammoths uh, up into the uh, early 1600s. That's remarkable stuff. I mean, so the, the Ice Age isn't that far away from us. And, 
again, we have no problems with animals like woolly mammoths just kind of being hunted to extinction or, or becoming extinct because of climate change or whatever, right? Walter? Again. So that would put the time between the fall and the flood to be more like 2,000 years? Probably a couple thousand years between the fall and the flood. If it's not, if the genealogies aren't gapped, right? I mean, that's, and that's why uh, there was a, a bishop, a bishop named Usher in, uh, I forget what date, Usher was in 10 hundreds maybe or something like that. And he actually, he actually did all the genealogies in the Bible, right? And he looked at all the genealogies in the Bible and how long everybody lived. And he set the date for the, for creation at a very specific day. Uh, it's like, uh. What is the date of creation according to Bishop Usher? What is the date of creation according to Bishop Usher? October 23rd, 4004 BC. So, so Usher has it at, I was thinking it was 8,000. It's about 6,000 years old. I think that's short. I think that's short, and I think some of the, uh, some of the uh, genealogies in the Bible are probably gapped. So, I think it's short. I think uh, scientific evidence shows a little bit older than 6,000 years. All right, ask me later. We're not going to get done. All right, so um, God creates. How did God create everything? What does the Bible say? How did God create everything? There are two things. There are two things. One of them is Harrison? All right, he spoke creation into existence in six days. That's exactly correct. And you are like the answer man tonight. Wow. All right, he spoke everything into creation in six days. And how else did he create it? This would be more of a uh, uh, how it was. Uh, Cora? He made his creation very good. He made his creation very good. That's exactly correct. He made his creation good. And so, uh, uh, kind of the same answer. How does God describe his creation? Good. Evening and morning, the first day, or I'm sorry, uh, and God said, let there be light. I don't know. It, very good, right? And it was very good, 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 right? He repeats that over and over and over again, and it was very good, and it was very good. All right, so Genesis 1 26 to 31. Where did we leave off on Genesis 1? Who read last? Riley, is it your turn? All right, Riley, let's read Genesis 1 26. 26, and we'll uh, come here. I mean, just read it verse by verse. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on earth. Next verse. Cooper, verse 27. All right, um, Anna, you can open it up, uh, get ready, but we're going to go on. Anna? All right. So God created a man in his own image, and the image of God he created him, male and female. And 28. Uh, Walter? Yes, You ready, Cooper? Verse 29. Yeah. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is what that is on the face of all the earth, 
and every tree was seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. Verse 30. And to every beast of the earth, to, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything <clears throat> that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. <clears throat> and it was... <clears throat> So everything, every animal, people and animals were vegetarians at the beginning. Mm -hmm. yeah. Alright? That is not a mandate that we have to be vegetarians today because God tells us in uh, Mark's Gospel and the book of Acts that all animals are okay to eat as well. Alright, verse 31. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. All right, so how did God create man? That goes all the way back to verse 26. Carter? In his image. In his image. Right. God creates man in his image. So now we're going to look at what it means to uh, create in his image. Number five. Number five says, The word image means exact likeness as in a mirror. Man is to reflect God in a way that a mirror reflects a person looking into it. Obviously, we do not all have the qualities that God has, or we would be God. Right? We're a reflection of God, we're not God. Right? Just like when you look in the mirror in the morning, that reflection is not you. When you look into a mirror in the morning, that reflection is not Anna, but it's a reflection of Anna, right? Right? I mean, that reflection isn't going to eat anything. It's not going to touch anything. It's not going to, right? But it's a reflection of Anna. It's, a, it's a, a mirror image. It's a reflection of Anna. That's what it means to be made in God's image, that we should reflect the image, that we should reflect our Creator. So what does it mean to be created in the image of God? Carter? Sinless or holy. Sinless or holy. That's the first one. Right? Holy or without sin. Holy means without sin. So we are created holy or without sin. What else did Adam and Eve, or what else, uh, what else did it mean that Adam and Eve were created in God's image, do you think? How did they know God? Joel? Wait, who did? Adam and Eve, who were created in God's image, how did they know God? To them. Uh, but how did they know God? How well did they know God? Kind of well. How well do you think Adam and Eve knew God? Really well. Well. <laughs> Not very well. Oh, Anna, well. you are brilliant. Yes, uh, that's exactly right. Yeah, they they knew God very very well. You might start that with, or you might uh, say that it's even uh, better than very well. That extremely well. well. You are all. So with it tonight, all right? I, I mean, this is a hard thing to just guess what I'm meaning, right? So I don't, uh, I don't, I don't disparage you. It's just funny. Um, so they knew God and His will perfectly. They knew exactly what God wanted them to do. God said, "Be fruitful and increase in number." They didn't have to wonder what that meant. Well, how many children should we have, God? They didn't have to wonder about that. They just knew what God's will was. Have dominion over the earth and take care of creation. They didn't have to wonder what God meant by that. They knew God's will perfectly. When God said, don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, did they know what God meant? Mm -hmm. Yes. When God said, if you eat from it, you will surely die, do you think they knew what God meant? Yes. Yes. They knew God and His will perfectly. That's what it means to be created in the image of God. Oh. So what, what have we and all people done that keeps us from accurately reflecting God and His image? What's the problem with Leo today? Why doesn't Leo reflect God's image very well? Because Leo is a... A sinful scumbag. That's exactly right. Leo is a sinful scumbag. And so Leo can't reflect the Creator perfectly. Because sin gets in the way. Right? It's kind of like when you wake up in the morning and you're really, really ugly because your hair is all over the place and you have, right? Ellie knows this. So she's nodding her head yes. Right? And I do just too. Ellie horribly, blah, right? And you look into the mirror and you go, wow, that's just not even a good picture of me, right? It's not a good image. Because, because your 
sleep and tiredness and whatever has gotten in the way of really reflecting what Ellie looks like. Well, that's the, what it's like with us. Our sin gets in the way of us really reflecting what um, God's image is. Right? So we aren't holy because sin gets in the way of our holiness, our sinlessness. And, and sin gets in the way of us knowing God perfectly and knowing God's will perfectly. Cooper? I, I actually get that way too, my head. Absolutely, well, right? Stuff, most girls hair. with most long girls hair. with long hair do. Not Pastor Anna though. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely, not, definitely not him. I know. But Pastor Anna, honestly, is just kind of ugly anyway. No, I mean, wait. Uh, his son's right there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I know, I know. It's a good thing he does not think I've heard his dad, right? And he watches the videos. Right. Because I well, he does actually watch the videos sometimes. I got in trouble. Huh. Oh, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Brad said something about Pastor Adam one, one week, and, and uh, Pastor Adam was watching the video because he's teaching the uh, Redeemer kids upstairs, the 7th and 8th graders for Redeemer. And so he heard what Brad had said. <laughs> That was pretty funny. All right. What has God done to restore that image within us? So here's the deal. We lost the image because of sin, but that image of God, Paul tells us that that image of God is being restored within us. How is that image of God being restored in us? Joel? Oh, wait. Oh, okay. So like he's Jesus died so on the cross. <laughs> Thank you. All right, he sent his son to die on the cross to pay for our sins, however you want to write it. Right, this is how the image of God begins to be restored within us. Now, are you completely holy? No. No, but does God call you his holy people? Yes. Yes, why? Because you are a forgiven child of God, a redeemed child of God. Through holy baptism, you have become part of God's family, and that holiness has begun again within you. All right? Um, uh, are, do you completely know God's will perfectly? No. No. We have to learn God's will, right? We have to learn God's will. We study the Ten Commandments. We study what God's Word says, what we should do and what we shouldn't do. We have to study and learn what God's will is because we don't know it perfectly because of sin. But can you start to learn God's will and can you start to follow God's will? Absolutely, because you are a forgiven, redeemed child of God in holy baptism. You belong to Him, and so you are starting to reflect Jesus in your life. And every time you are uh, uh, kind and loving and helpful and uh, uh, serving and uh, all of these things that God desires for your life, every time you do that, you are reflecting God's image. You're reflecting God's image. Now look at Genesis 9, 6. God said this after man had already lost the ability to reflect him accurately. Yet, God places a special value upon each person, a value so high that murder of a person is to be repaid, but nothing less than the life of the person who committed the murder. According to this passage, what makes a person so valuable? Read this passage for us. Whoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed. For God made, made man in his own image. Alright, so what makes us so valuable? We're created in God's image. And, and so, because you're created in God's image, you are valuable. Never, never think your life is worth nothing or, or, uh, or worth less than other things because of anything, right? Never... Never think that you are not valuable because you are created in God's image. You are of highest value. All right, let's talk about angels in uh, the ten minutes that we have left. Angels. In the Nicene Creed, we, create, we uh, confess that God is the creator of things Visible and invisible. Invisible creation is angels. And that would be the good angels and the evil angels. Right? Satan is part of the invisible creation. And so God creates all things visible and invisible. Um, and uh, specifically what the writers of the Nicene Creed... Right? The writers of the Nicene Creed were not thinking about atoms and molecules. Right? They were they were thinking of 
angels and the and the heavenly realm. Joel? So like were an like are a are angels just there or are they like like never mind. Like can they like are they just are they, what I mean like can they like come Angels are real. So like that's what I mean is They exist. But like are they like can they like talk to each other? That's what I meant like are they like Joel wants to know there's one right next to him right now. <laughs> no, I think he wants to know if, uh, like, uh, like, Gabriel and uh, Michael hang out at the bar together like, do they talk and throw, to back a, throw back a cold one after a long day of uh, mm -hmm. taking care of God's people. Uh, so um, can they, like, think-ish? Like, can they think? Oh, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. They have, uh, they have uh, uh, intellect and, uh, um, you, I mean, they're not, they're not humans. But um, uh, surely, surely there uh, is obviously uh, uh, something more to angels. We're not given a whole lot about angels in the scripture, all right? So we say as much as God says, and then we'll find out on the last day when um, we dwell with the angels, all right? The new creation on the last day is different than the present creation because uh, uh, heaven and earth will kind of combine and be together and we will dwell where God dwells. There isn't going to be this separation between man and angel anymore like the first creation. Leo? How are angels different from man but not God? Excellent question. Hold on to that. We'll get there in just a second. Oh. The passage? Excellent. Um, well, let's read that then. Uh, let's see. So, uh, Read about the creation of angels in Psalm 104, verses 1 to 4. Read that for us. And then uh, somebody read uh, Hebrews 1 to 7. Who has Hebrews 1 to 7? Sydney, you've got that. All right, read that for us. 104. Okay. So I'm supposed to start at 104 or 104, 1 to 4. Okay. So, bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord, 